Let's bring your attention to this now. A report by the Portfolio Committee on, on Defense has made uh, shocking revelations about the state of South Africa's defense capability. Our border fences are wholly inadequate. There's a lack of air support for the SANDF to respond to emergencies. Our Air Force fleet will soon become obsolete and the Defense Force is hamstrung by a lack of funding. Now these findings come after an inspection or an oversight visit if you like to key military installations including one military hospital with the situation deteriorating in neighboring country Mozambique. Will South Africa have the ability to assist if asked to do so. For perspective, let's uh, bring in now uh, Cyril Kaba, who's the chair of Parliament's Portfolio Committee on Defence and Military Veterans. Cyril, thanks for your time. It's great to have you on the program. Perhaps let's take this bit by bit if we can and start with what you actually found when you undertook that inspection. I think it was in November last year. Uh, good morning, uh, Ayanda, and thank you very much for welcoming me. Um, <coughs> look, Ayanda, the uh, uh, the Defence Portfolio Committees uh, conducted a, a visit uh, to various uh, military bases across uh, the country, starting, of course, with uh, one military hospital uh, in Tabatswane, Pretoria, and uh, to the base where uh, Operation uh, Tosano is uh, housed. And from there, we visited the, the borderline. Or, just before the borderline, we also went to the Watergroup uh, Airport. And after that, we visited the borderline of South Africa, uh, moving from a uh, uh, paid bridge, uh, that is a uh, border between uh, Zimbabwe and South Africa, to Gomari Port, border between Mozambique and, uh, and South Africa, and down to uh, Kezaden Dumo. Uh, that's a border between uh, South Africa and Mozambique and uh, and, and, so, and uh, Swadini and, and South Africa. So those are the areas we visited. Uh, we picked up a number of uh, issues of concern that the committee is going to be seized with uh, in this uh, term. And, uh, you know, in the hospital that we visited, you'll recall that uh, one military hospital uh, provides services to uh, defense force members, uh, you know, their families and military veterans, and to some extent to VIPs like presidents, presidents of uh, other uh, countries as well. And uh, we uh, were briefed that there is a project that has been underway for the last uh, 10 years or so, mm. uh, um, you know, to refurbish and maintain the, the hospital, and it remains under refurbishment and the maintenance up to this date, despite uh, the department having spent a lot of money on, on that project. How much That's money the, are we speaking, uh, Mr. Cyril, apologies for interrupting there. If it's a project 10 years in the making, it can't be a small sum. Well, yes, uh, we've spent uh, well over 500 million rand on, on, the, on the project. Uh, and the department says it needs uh, another a billion rand to complete the exercise. And, uh, but the, what we found was uh, poor maintenance and, uh, and, and, and workmanship, uh, so to speak. And uh, we apportion blame on the Department of Public Works very soon. We'll be meeting with the Department of Public Works just to get uh, information as to really why are they letting this prime, um, you know, institution to go to ruin. I mean, there's a first floor. The first floor was, uh, it's, 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 it's in ruin as I'm talking with you, and the department says um, you can't do anything about it, but you must bring down the walls that the Department of Public Works put up because they can't fit in the equipment the equipment that needed to be fit, fitted in, in that, uh, um, on the first floor wow. uh, to accommodate the needs of, of the hospital. But I must uh, thank, um, you know, uh, uh, give credit to the Department of uh, Defense for renovating the seventh floor. They used the funding that was made available during COVID and uh, to renovate the whole ICU uh, uh, floor on, on the seventh floor and the state of the art and within a period of about seven months. And now you ask yourself why it takes so long for public works to renovate other, other floors yeah. that 
we now talk uh, more than 10 years. Uh, of uh, uh, refurbishment and maintenance. If I can so come in there, uh, Cyril, uh, you know, it, it, it certainly is a situation that leaves a lot to be desired, but for the interest of time, can we also just speak to us about the situation on our borders? Part of what the report found is that the situation there is wholly inadequate. What does that mean? Well, look, we visited the borders, like I said earlier on, uh, the borders. I mean, the, the fence, you recall that the Department of Public Works put up a fence there, uh, I think they spent well over 40 uh, million rand. At Bybridge, yeah. At, at Bybridge, correct. And uh, that fence, we found that fence uh, down, and uh, the material that was used is not the material that you would use uh, for, uh, you know, uh, you know, fence, uh, border fence. I can tell you, if you, you can still see the fence that was, was, was that they were meant to replace, that was built many years decades back is still there up and of course it's uh, starting to loosen up here and there but it's still res uh, standing up but the fence that was installed i mean uh, about a year ago is almost um, you know uh, non-existent and that then creates a problem and uh, between uh, ourselves and and, and and the neighboring countries and we also went to the border between mozambique and uh, and, and, and South Africa, there's literally no fence there. And, uh, and uh, in fact, it's, it's, I'm not, I mean, it's, it's worse with the fence that is meant to be on the side of uh, Mozambique. That one it's, uh, was long gone. So in other words, there's just no fencing, um, you know, between South Africa and, and Mozambique. Yeah. You know, many people who have frequented these uh, borders would have, I guess, told Parliament, anybody interested, all of these details for free. We've seen as much in the many, many times when our reporters have been crossing from those areas. The immediate question then becomes, what from your standpoint do you believe to be the implication for ordinary South Africans, given what you found? It almost feels like there's no protection. Well, look, um, I'm, I'm, I mean, if you look at the cars that uh, they get smuggled uh, from South Africa to Mozambique in particular, and uh, you'll recall that the matter is very urgent that needs uh, to be attended to. You look at the goods that are smuggled between uh, uh, the two countries, especially from Mozambique into, in, into South Africa, and, uh, you know, uh, drugs as well. I can't rule out drugs uh, because we did get information on, on, on drugs that are being uh, intercepted by our defense uh, force. So the situation is hopelessly inadequate. And uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, let alone people crossing, you know, uh, between the two countries as if, uh, you know, there is no uh, border uh, separating the two countries. So it explains why today we have so many undocumented uh, uh, foreign and uh, nationals in, in South Africa, because it's literally, a, a, you know, a walkover. And mm -hmm. uh, you simply just cross the, the, the fence and they're on the other side of, 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 of the country. It so it's a matter that we really must attend to, and we'll be receiving full briefing on it when we meet with the official concerned. When is that meeting expected to take place? Well, you'll understand that this visit took place uh, during December, and um, we early this year we had other pressing uh, engagement, but we've already filed a report, and um, that calls for uh, uh, various agencies, uh, public works, and, uh, and 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 the Department of Defence to look at and respond to it uh, before we have a, a formal uh, or other sitting down. A meeting with them, right. but as for as for the mili as for the military hospital, and uh, we were told, and that the department has uh, commissioned an, a forensic uh, investigation into it, and the committee has resolved that the, fir the first thing to do is to call for that report to be briefed, so that we can then see what else then needs to to be done. But somebody needs yeah. uh, to take full responsibility for what happened, and the heads must really roll. Yeah, it goes without saying. You know, given what you've said and the idea that all of this has also been hamstrung by a lack of funding, um, the big concern for many people watching the news cycle is the situation in Mozambique. I'd asked the question in my intro. Um, in the event that a decision is made that South Africa should intervene in whatever form to try uh, manage the situation in Maputo, are we adequately equipped to be able to have a substantial level of intervention 
given what you have seen? Well, I, I think I think our SNDF would be equal to to the task. Uh, again, it would not if if that decision were were to be taken. Obviously, it would not be the, the South Africa only contributing uh, to that exercise. We see we foresee the SADC uh, getting involved in the situation and deciding as to which countries will contribute to. Um, you know, uh, going into Mozambique and uh, stabilizing the situation there. But I don't want to comment on that because other agencies of government are looking and monitoring uh, the, the situation. But I hope that we will be equal to the situation as a country because for now the happenings that you are referring to are happening are just taking place um, up north of, of Mozambique and the areas we're talking about are just the um, further south of uh, Mozambique. So we will wait and, and see what, uh, how the situation is developing up there. But I know that um, it's being monitored. Absolutely. Well, I mean, to be fair, experts have said that the signs is that this is spreading in Mozambique and it's a matter of time before it spills over to neighboring countries and could have cascading effects for SADC as a whole. But thanks very much for your take on this. I understand your positionality comes with limitations too, but appreciate you telling us what you can. Cyril Kaba is the chair of the uh, Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Veterans. Cyril, thanks very much indeed once again.